What is going on everybody and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's video. Today is going to be a different video as today I am going to be ranking the first 9 episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's. So this is going to be a series I do on the channel where every 10 episodes I will be ranking the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 episodes from my least favorite episode to my favorite episode. Now I want to... <laughs> miss a little bit in detail real quick just for anyone that asks about it in the comment section below just in case but um like for this video i'm only going to be doing episodes one through nine i know i said ten but i'm decided since we're on hiatus i will just do the first nine and then make it up with 11 episodes in the next one which i want to keep in mind that next video will only have episodes 10 through 20 so if you're confused why i didn't put not episodes one through nine in that that is the reason why. I just wanted to explain it that way someone didn't get confused on accident. So, with that said, let's get right into it. My rankings of the first nine episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. I hope you guys enjoy it, and let's get into it. These first two ones can be interchangeable, but for this one, my least favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s episode that from the first nine is episode eight of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. Now, I want to say, say this real quick before we continue any, any forward. I've loved every single episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. I think it's been doing really well. I've really been surprised on how good it was doing. I thought this show was going to be really crappy, but you know what? This ceased to surprise me. But I will say, though, this episode for me and why it ranks so low for me as my least favorite it's just because this one is really filler arc. I know a lot of it, um, a good majority of the episodes, I think maybe, I would say maybe a good half of them, maybe like four of them were filler arcs from what I've seen. I know there were some implements in some of the episodes that might help pertain to the story, but this is not one of them. This one is complete filler arc. This episode, for me, from watching it, you could literally skip this episode and nothing would have happened. Not a single thing would have happened that you don't already know in this. Because the only thing they really talked about that progresses in the story was that the tablet disappeared. But we already figured that up out in episode 6. So it, it does. it's to the point where it doesn't even matter. But I will say though the duel was pretty interesting. The way... This whole episode was weird, I would say that. Um, literally, the duel was for a f soda machine. Basically, it was a hot day, and Yuga, Gakuto, and Rook basically was going to go to a vending machine and get a drink. And this bulky person stands in front of their way and challenges him to a rush duel because he believes that he is the duel king. And obviously, Rook takes offense to that because he believes that, and basically, they duel. Over that, and basically, the only reason this guy duels is because his mom said he would not make him spaghetti anymore if he rush dueled. So, what does he do? He goes and rush duels. Uh, and then, even in the end, she gives him the spaghetti anyways. Which, by the way, I think it was really intriguing. It was a growth for Mimi because this was apparently the son of Mimi. I know, I know it's weird that this bulky dude was her son, but trust me. He's not as big as you think. Um, we do find out that he was actually wearing a costume from a show that he watched that he was inspired by. And that's why he told him that. I, think, I do think his whole deck, though, his ap apocalyptic deck, was pretty cool. It was the first field spell we saw in the series, which I honestly thought we were not going to see any field spells in the series. But I think that was really cool seeing it. And the summoning of Dragonic Slayer was incredible. It was my favorite summoning of... All of the monsters that we've seen so far, other than Yami Roller, Gakuto's ace monster. Overall, I think it was a good episode. The only reason why it's ranked at the lowest is just because it's filler. It, there's really nothing that advances the story, so I feel like it just hurts the episode even more. But that's personally me. Maybe you guys have this a little bit higher, but I do rank episode 8 at the lowest of the 9 Yu-Gi-Oh! shows. But... Let's go into the next one. Up next, we actually have the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. I'm pretty sure a lot of people would suspect that this episode was a little bit lower than the rest because, honestly, the first episodes are probably going to be lower. 
when you look at it. I think the only one that's probably would be higher than the first nine episodes where episode one would be higher is probably the first episode of Yu Yu the original series. I mean, the whole Exodia obliterate thing is it's iconic. Come on, but anyway, the first episode was good. It was a good introduction to Yuga, Gakuto, Rook, and Roman's characters. Um, we start getting the suspicion of Roman when she's taking the pictures of the group. Like, she took the whole lot, the first episode. And then you got Rook, which basically tells Yuga about the prophecy of this stone tablet that basically can grant them power. And then you got Gakuto, the comedic relief. But honestly, he was he was not good the first episode. I say he's definitely got a lot better as the episodes go on, but he definitely wasn't my favorite in this episode. I think the duel against Hologram Man was really good. We got to see Blue Eyes White Dragon, which was pro probably maybe the reason why it was higher than episode 8. I mean, come on, it was Blue Eyes. Although he automatically gets obliterated, which is kind of funny because actually talking about the first episode, if you remember when Yugi summoned... Um, Exodia, he obliterated the three blue eyes, and that's basically what Seven Road Magician did. He gained 7,000 attack points through the card effects and its own effects, and was able to just destroy Blue Eyes Right Dragon, which I know a lot of people say that's a disgrace, but I think that's just kind of a cool reference if you look at it in that perspective. I think that's a really cool, I guess you can say Easter egg, but it really isn't. And also, this duel kind of taught us how rush duels work in the whole mechanic. It was a tutorial episode, which does make it a little bit lower, but hey, I think it was still a good introduction. He wins, and then this big old door opens, and now all their duel discs turn into the seven, the rush duel form for the duel discs. Now everyone plays rush duels instead of master duels, which that's what it's seeming to be. Hopefully, we see master duels, but that's another video we'll talk about later on. But it does rank lower because of it being a tutorial, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't great to see Blue Eyes White Dragon again. It ranks at number 8 on this list. This was another one that I thought about for a little bit, but being at rank 7 on this is episode 6. Now, this was another kind of a weird episode. It wasn't as weird as the first episode, but it kind of had its own weirdness in its own sake basically what happens is that yuga finds out that their favorite ramen shop was going to be closing down due to the fact that these robots have or these goha drones i don't know why i just well, i mean they are robots but these goha drones basically created this ramen theme park and it overtook the ramen shop and he was going to close down but he will be serving one last bowl of ramen to end his career and basically, Yuga didn't want that to happen, so he made this bunch of ventures to attract people. It doesn't end up working. And then we see this kid that comes in, and he's basically a ramen ninja. He comes in with a mask and everything. He goes to the same elementary school as Yuga, actually. In fact, he knows him from the newspaper from episode 5, which I think was a little cool thing, which we'll talk about episode 5 a little bit later in the video. But I think that was really cool how they kind of like combined that together with the whole mag or with the um newspaper and basically how that was able to contact these people. So he comes in and he hear he also hears about the last Roman going to be going away and he basically wants to get the last Roman. R R Roman, excuse me, I didn't know why I said Roman there for a second. <laughs> oh wow, that oh boy. <laughs> Um, but anyway, he basically goes and asks for the last bowl of Robin, but Yuga says, no, I want the last bowl, and that's basically what they duel over. The duel was alright. How the duel went, basically, was whoever got the Robin won, but he also had an additional effect. If he won the duel, he would tell, Yuga would have to tell him how he was able to create rush duels, because he wanted to create his own ramen themed dueling. Yeah, ramen themed dueling. Try making that a real life thing. Hmm. But anyway, Yuga wins the duel. He uses Seven Road Magician and uses Piercing after changes the monster to defense position to win the duel. And even afterwards, he said it was nice and was going to go and show him where the stone tablet was that basically helped him create rush duels. Now, this is a. This is actually the reason why it's actually a little bit higher than episode 1 and 8, was because at the end of this. The ending of it is, is when they go back down to the place where it was, the relic just disappeared. It 
it is nowhere to be found. It just left without a trace, and that makes a lot of it makes a lot of people think where in the world did it go? Like it gets all suspicious. In fact, Roman takes another picture of it, and I think this was the episode where we first see Roa Kirishima as he's in that dark and he's basically looking on his phone and he smiles. So maybe there was some connection there. I don't know, but. I think that whole scene just made it better. I wish it was a little bit more impactful. I think the other ones in, was more of an impact to me personally, but it still was a pretty good episode. I rank episode 6 at number 7. At the 6th spot and just missing out on the 5 spot was episode 9, the latest episode that we have gotten before the hiatus break. This episode was honestly enjoyable for me, even though I kind of ratting on it as like I was getting tired of these filler episodes. I s- kind of enjoyed it a little bit. I never thought I would enjoy it as much as I did. It was a really fascinating episode. They basically um go on this hunt for this monster. I can't remember the monster. It's been a minute since I've actually seen the episode. But they And if you want to know for yourself, I'm probably sure, sure I mentioned the review, which if you want to see all of it, again, check out the playlist. I've done... All the episodes up to episode 9, so go and check that out. But anyway, back on the topic, they go and search for this monster. They meet these three kids that are also looking for him. But we do eventually find out in the stalls, out of all places, that the only reason why they're going after it is for money. And then they end up dueling over it because Yuga would have still helped them if... No, I'm trying to think about it right... I know you got duel something. I know you do it because he is too kind to the point that it scares me. I know that, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'm not even supposed to be explaining the whole entire episode. That's what the reviews are for. So let's just get talking. The duel I think was pretty good. I it was cool seeing the new T Rex monster. I think it was the first time we've actually seen dinosaurs in this in this anime. So I think it was pretty cool. Um, I like the whole. What made me like this episode a little bit more than episode six. Was that I love the um thing that they did in this duel. Um, he, Yuga activates the effect of full meteor impact, which basically destroys all monsters that his opponent controls. So basically, it represented if you guys remember, meteors crash down on the earth, or this is the theory, or yeah, I think it's a theory. Uh, some people might say it's true, but. I say it's a theory. The theory is, is that meteors came down from the Earth and basically wiped all the dinosaurs out. That's been the story that has been passed down from generation to generation. That's what kids learn these days of what happened. And I love that representation from this duel. I think that was really cool. You also see a side of Yuga that was really weird. He basically went and blatantly said, How about we drop the investigation? I don't think we need to continue anymore. Let's just stop what we're doing. We eventually found out that the thing that was making all the noise was apparently one of his inventions because it was a sound counselor, I get Sound counselor, excuse me. But what makes this episode for me too is Roma's, Roman snaps one more pick and we see another clip of Roa. We get to see him in his full design. We did get him a little bit later on the week. And he was just playing games on his phone, and he gets another picture, and he just smiles, and then he kind of chuckles a little bit. So I think that really emphasizes that he's really going to get into the series really soon, and I'm kind of mad that episode 10 stopped, because this might have been the introduction to Roman, and might have been the fr- my favorite one out of them all, but we we didn't end up getting that. But I think episode was good. I think the filler episodes are just a little bit... Not appealing to me, I guess, because, you know, we're not going to really see these characters again unless there's some type of tournament arc. So, it it doesn't really appeal to me as much. It might appeal to you guys. You guys might like this more than I do, but honestly, these filler ones are going to be lower for me just because of that fact that they're not as important as the other duels that we've gotten in this series. But that's just my opinion. And, episode, yeah, episode 9 ranks 6 for this list. Now we are starting to get into the 5 highest rank episodes. And speaking of 5, at the number 5 spot is episode 5, surprisingly. I think this was just a really good episode. There was some plot 
to this when you really think about it because there was certain times where this ep- it came back to this episode and the events of this episode helped cause these other episodes and I'll get to that in just a second but basically the reason for this episode is that Yuga and the Yuga Rook and Gakuto had to try to find a way to be able to get rush duels out into the world because Goha cup deleting the um videos that they were making about rush duels so they could not get rush duels out so they decided to go to their local newspaper at the school and they were able to get an interview rook actually gave an interview to the group but they ended up blaspheming the rush duels saying that they were bad and all that stuff and even going after rook as well which and which make which is kind of funny because Rook ends up doing the leader of the newspaper club, which I actually remember his name is Bakaro, and that was where the duel begins in this. I liked his deck; it was a newspaper themed deck. I think was pretty cool. I think the duel was really interesting. It wasn't my favorite, but I think it was a pretty decent duel. Um, the some. You know, Drush, Drush, Rush Dragon Dragir is the second time after he, he does this really cool move, and I really like it. He ends up adding Rush Dragon Dragir's back to his deck because it was, or no, it was placed at the bottom of the deck because of um, Bakaro's effect from his big old ace monster. Sends it to the bottom of the deck. He activates the effect of a dragon, sending it to the graveyard so he can save damage, but it also shuffles his deck again. Which basically gets Rush Dragon to the top. He summons again and attacks him with his final one-liner in this episode, which I think is kind of weird and funny at the same time. He just bursts out, burned to ashes. I don't know where that came from, but I thought that was incredible and that was funny. But Rook is great, man. I love Rook. And then you got the end of the episode where they write an article and Rook is basically the king, which I think was kind of funny. Um, what makes this not higher, again, this was another fill arc, what makes me like this more than the art ones is that there was a lot of impact from what happened in this episode that affects episode 6 through 9, Be- well, more specifically 6, 7, and 8, because, um, that kid, Mimi's kid, one not a known rook, uh, known as the dual king, if it wasn't from the newspaper, Goa Corp would not have known of Yuga in his notebook if it wasn't for the magazine or for the newspaper. And this Roman kid wouldn't have known of Yuga without the magazine or the newspaper. God, I don't know why I keep going to the magazine from the newspaper. All of this is falling from that newspaper article that he wrote. And I think that was a really cool way to implement it so that it makes it feel like he wasn't really that useless. So I think that that symbolism was really, really good. And that's why it ranks higher for me. But again, this was a one-shot character and kind of, kind of filler in a way, but also kind of not. So yeah, I think this was a good episode. It, I can't say it would go any higher, but hey, it makes number five, which I think is pretty good. I guess we'll just get rid of Rook Spotlight. Hitting the number four spot is episode two. This was the second episode. That we got in the series. It basically was the events after what had happened. From the first episode. From when, when the rush duels were installed. Basically Rook wanted to go out there. Talking about how he was going to become the dual king. With this new game style. He can become the dual king. And rule basically over everyone. In a weird way. And basically what he wants to do. Is get rush duels out there. Into the public. And be able to get famous basically and you guys just like i just want this for people to be having fun because he thinks of the rules of being strict and to show it off they actually end up doing which and this is the reason why i like this episode even though it does foreshadow it in the um episode or in the opening which I didn't discover that I don't know if anyone else knew in the opening you got you see an image where you guys flying back and rook has his dual disc and he has his arm in the air like he basically attacked and basically won the duel. And at least that's what I interpreted. That was the loss that he had from that episode. Because you see the next shot of Gakuto basically being beaten even though he doesn't wear that little outfit. I don't know what that's actually called. But yeah, they have the duel. And it is a shocking episode. And I think that's what really makes me like it a lot. Is It has a shocking end to it even though it was portrayed. Because... Other than episode 2 of the original series 
and episode 2 of arc 5, we have never seen a protagonist lose very, very, very early in this series. Now, you can talk about past events that happened, but I mean more from on screen. As Yuki lost to Pegasus by at the time running out and he had lower life points, and Yuya lost because he didn't know how the pendulum summon. Yuya actually lost. He had n he could not win. He didn't like. It's not like he didn't play his spell or trap card that he had set the turn before. He lo He lost. Like he legit lost. And I think that was such a surprising thing. And I think it shows like they don't care that the protagonist is supposed to be this tough character. Like you know, we came back from Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns with Yusaku basically being undefeated. And now they're showing, like, yeah, we're not going to have an undefeated protagonist. We're going to make him lose in the second episode, which I do respect a lot. I think some of the other episodes does impact me more. But this doesn't mean that this wasn't a great episode. I really loved the duel. I loved seeing the first summoning of Rush Dragon and Dragears. It was so awesome. And even though I didn't get to the top three, it still sits at the ranked four spot on this list. Now it's time to rank the last three episodes. The last three we have is episode 7, episode 3, and episode 4. And starting this off is episode 7. Now episode 7 was a really interesting story. We really got to see more of Goa in this episode as we get to be introduced to Mimi, one of the members of Tapa Hexagon. And basically her mission was she was to infiltrate the school as a student Mind you, this woman is 30 years old. She's in her 30s. Having to pretend that she is an elementary kid, which she does look like she's in elementary school, which is the funny thing, because she talks about in this episode she talked about in this episode how she was blessed by God to be able to look this young, even though I think that is a little bit weird to be like an 8-year-old in my opinion. It kind of reminded me of something um I don't know if anyone played Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but it kind of was that thing where that um lady at the tech lab kind of did an experiment where she basically made herself young again. So you kind of had a reference there. I don't know if anyone could tell that reference if you played games. And I don't even know if that is a reference, but that's kind of what that reminded me of in this episode. But anyway, um, basically her old scheme was to get to Yuga to steal the notebook to basically because they believed that this notebook would uninstall rush duels they their main goal in this the, is the uninstall rush duels they think it's horrible they think that it is sinful and they want to get rid of it so they send Mimi in to go and get it and that's basically what the duel is about she even though it was a weird way of how to do it because this is where Yuga is too innocent and too dumb to be honest because he was about to give her the notebook and if he actually had the thing written in there he would have been done for but Mimi thought it was a trick so she actually decides to duel him and that's where the duel of this episode goes what makes me like this more than episode two and this is probably another personal thing is i love mimi's deck it basically her deck is younger forms of older cards like the girl cards like you know you had your younger version of mystic elf and you had your um Younger version, Dean Kito. I think that was so cool. We also get to see Yuga's other ace monster on um, lacrosse, which I think looks amazing. Way better than Seven's Road Magician, I will say. And I think his summoning was cool. We also had a Noble Knights monster, and then we had that uh, Hydro Magician card. I don't think that's his name. It's a Magician card. But Yuga ends up winning the duel, as always, and... Basically, he still gives the notebook away. Like, even though she lost, bet in the notebook, and looked so suspicious with that weird outfit, you do not know how to break an entry. You don't know how to not cover your face. Because all you covered was basically your nose and your hair. If they couldn't tell you, if they couldn't tell who that was, they are the dumbest kids that I've ever seen. Because you could not tell me that wasn't obvious. But I'm getting a little bit rowdy. But the episode was great, though. These next two, though, I enjoyed a lot more than this. It was good plot. It was really good plot. Some people think this was another one shot. I don't think so because I feel like Mimi is still gonna be important because you know her thing. Like she doesn't know if Rush duels are bad or not. Like she had. 
the debate at the end of the episode, even though she went back to like, oh, rush tools are bad, they're bad, we need to destroy them. But hey, maybe we'll see what how Mimi's character grows further later in the episodes. But yeah, episode six is ranked third on this list. I will say this, these two episodes were the hardest ones to rank. I love them both so much, but after a lot of thought about it, the ranked two on this list is episode four. I will say, though, I really like this episode. It made me like Gakuto a lot more, because honest to God, I did not like him at the very beginning of the series. I thought he was just going to be the annoying character. He was a, he was basically just gonna be that like annoying character that just follows you around just to make jokes and stuff like that, which we don't see in an episode. We see a side of Gakuto that I really liked. Basically, he's the student council president, as we learned in episode one, and from the little summary we got of him before Sevens even began when Jump Festa came out. And we see in this episode that he goes and helps all these different kids. He even fixes the roof. I don't know why in the world Gakuto is fixing a roof at his age, but I'm not going to question I'm not going to question it. I'm just not going to question it. But they basically schedule a duel because they were going to ban rush duels from the school. Gakuto was going to make it a rule that you cannot rush duel. And he loves rush dueling too. Like he even admits it himself that he loves to rush duel with Yuga. He has rush dueled him multiple times off screen and has lost to him. So he really does have fun dueling Yuga. I don't know why he had that change. But they do duel in this episode, and you got these two kids that were part of the um, student council, basically with him, basically drawing his cards, holding his duel disc. Like, and the, I will say though, Gakuto got some fashion. I, I will say though, that thing he wore, I I don't remember what it's called. Ah, it's gonna really bother me that I don't remember the name. But he changes from this weird suit, and he basically plays defensive defense of the entire time but when we got to see his ace monster it was great yami ruler was so cool that was my second favorite animation i really love the summoning of that i really do love that card a lot and we also got to see um the basically the dark magician girl of this deck um seven's road witch i think that was a great deb debut for that card i thought it was cool to see her her and seven's road magician together and yeah this duel was just good even though Gakatu does lose he loses he, like he doesn't get sour or makes a dramatic thing he's just like I lost like he was so serious about it and I think it was so good it really makes Gakuto just a lovable character and then the end of the episode when him winning the election over Rook was just great I really love that scene because Rook was basically saying like because Gakuto was actually going to retire. We did find that out a little bit later, before the duel, that he was going to retire from the student. No, he bet the duel that he would quit the student council, and which he does, and then he gets reelected, which is kind of funny. So, yeah, even though it was such a great episode, this episode I just think I liked a little bit more. So, let's get right into it. Well, through process and elimination, Ranked at number one in my favorite episode from the first nine episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens is episode three. Now, I know this is a lot of people's favorite episode, but can you blame me? This was a really good episode. This was a good way to develop Roman's character. I know a lot of people have been speculating. Even in this episode, um, Rook and Gakuto start suspicing. Su had some suspicion on Roman. Even God, um, Rook said that she might be a Goha spy. He literally said he, that she might be a Goha spy. And I think that was kind of funny. And she basically said at the beginning that she doesn't, she doesn't like the duel. That it isn't her thing. Which kind of made my heart drop. Because one of my biggest problems that I had um, with some of the female characters. More specifically Tori and um, Ansu from the original series is that they really didn't duel much. And it made me really sad because I really do like to see characters dueling. It makes me relate to them a lot more. It makes me want to root for them more. But we don't really get to see with those characters. And I was afraid that we would never see her. But basically, Yuga tempts her into doing it. Basically, like, basically put her in a corner where she basically accepts to do it. Which is really cool. 
I don't know why it was funny, but <laughs> anyway, um, the duel in this episode I thought was really good. Um, the one gripe I did have is that we didn't actually get to see Roman's full deck. We did get to see her ace monster, that guitar girl, which I thought was really cool. I really do like its design as well. Um, basically her deck was just a combined deck of Yuga's old cards. It's basically a fix em up deck, so she can be able to duel, with the exception of that ace monster that she put in there. And she gave Yuga a run for money. He, she ended up getting him down to, I believe, 600 life points, actually. Even though she never dueled before, or I'm assuming she's never dueled before. That, or she just doesn't like duel, period. I think it was really great seeing that episode. That duel and that summoning of that card and Rook and Gakuto having their comedic reliefs trying to get to her guitar case to try to see like to see her equipment and stuff to see if she was a spy or not which I think was kind of funny even though she shows that it's just a guitar case that has a guitar in it which yeah, because she's a guitarist she is part of Roa and Roman which was a band that they have Basically on Yu-Gi-Oh's YouTube. I mean, I don't know what else you call that. That is Yu-Gi-Oh's YouTube. And they're they're famous. Like, she's athletic. She does all that stuff. We learned that earlier in the episode that she's athletic. She does all this stuff and that she's in a band. We also get the um story of how she got the um her ace monster. She was at a concert. And this woman, basically, you know how, like, some bands will normally throw a t-shirt or at weddings people will throw that bouquet? She throws a card and Ro Roman was got the card and she's always kept that card since so I really do like the resemblance of that card and how much it meant to her I think that was really good and I, I think this episode was just really good overall and I think she snaps another picture at the end of this episode as well actually you know what now thinking about it I think that was the episode we got introduced to Ra Kirishima. I, I can't remember which episode it was, but uh, this might have been the episode. Someone let me know which episode it was. I can't remember. I think it was this one because I think she snaps a photo and we do see a glimpse of Roa again because he was scrolling through the images that she sent. But I can't wait to see what that's all about. But yeah, that is going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what your guys' rankings of the first nine episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 was for you. And yeah, I'm going to be trying to do this when episodes 10 through 20 will come out. And I will basically be doing this until the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s. And I just can't wait to try out this new series for you guys. So that is going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until the next video, guys, take care and have you guys yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching.